Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Blown Coverage. As always, this is Joey as well as Corey. And today, guys, we have a very special guest. He'll be competing at Combat FC next Friday, September 15th in Boston, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Rick Genghis Khan. How you doing, my man? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. Uh, welcome to the pod. You know, how, how are things, uh, how are they feeling for you? How's this fight camp been so far? It's good. I mean, I have a, you know, full-time job. I have a school that I run. And um, so that's a little challenging to get all the training in that I need. And plus, I'm, I'm older now, so uh, things hurt a lot more than we're used to. So just trying to balance the work, training, you know, yeah. schedule and stuff. But it's, uh, I've, I've, I've got it kind of down now since from my last fight last year. I make it work. Yeah, make it work. That's important. Um, yeah. You know, for, for you, man, you, you've had a good career so far. You've competed across multiple promotions. Um, how important is it for you? to find more success and prove that you are still one of the top guys in the welterweight division? To me, that doesn't matter anymore. Like I had my time, I had my career, um, and you know, I I did better than I expected to. And, and I started at age 32, you know, kind of uh, old for never having done any like striking stuff or and stuff, um, you know. So I had a good run, I had a good career. I'm happy with that, you know, I, you know, I, I I did well. I was I was you know excited for that, happy for that. Now it's just about you know having fun. Like I don't, I'm not trying to keep my legacy going or whatever you know, and you know think that I still have a shot at a title. Like I just want to go out there because I still can, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not fast and not as strong as I used to be. Obviously, I'm a little older, but I can still compete with you know the youngsters, and I have a good strong base. And it's more just about. I could still do it, not because I didn't have anything to prove. Like sure. I, I did my thing, and I'm happy with that. I don't need to be like saying I made the UFC or you know like I, that's you know, whatever. I, I I'm happy with my career so far. Right, understood. You know you, your opponent you're going up against, Drew Fickett. Um, can you tell us is there anything um, that you see in his game? Any holes? Obviously, we don't want to give away your game plan, but. Are you and your team analyzing, you know, if you guys studied his his way of how he goes about things and really pinpointed some errors that you can really capitalize on? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I come from, you know, like a professional style of, of camp and, 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 and training for specific opponents and, and sure. players and stuff like that from my judo career. I study a lot of film, right? Because that's, you know, that's, that's how you, you start picking things apart with people and find their their holes like you said sure so yeah we, you know we've done a lot of uh, research and, and that's you know obviously important and um you know we're we're, we're confident i'm confident in, in my ability to, to do well sure you know matter of fact uh i was going to say next week um you got a birthday coming up right next friday it's on yeah i've never fought on my my birthday before so that's <laughs> one of the main reasons why i wanted to take this fight because i was like that's yeah. that's kind of you know, fun, fun fact, man, you and I share the same birthday. I'm September 15th and uh, you got a couple more years than I do, but we're both Virgos, man. So, uh, you know, it'd be a special, special to see you win as a good birthday present to yourself. Um, but yeah, you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, you're, you're getting a little bit older. Um, nowadays, you're starting to see athletes pretty much they're they're using and taking advantage of things that can help them recover. Um, with everything that's really like available to you, you know, as far as that, is it easier nowadays than it was when you first got into fighting? Uh, in what way? In what do you mean? As far as, you know, the recovery, um, all the, you know, things that you have accessible to you these days with recovering, um, is it easier or is it like an easier process for you to, to really like recover faster or is it different from back then? Um, it's not different. I mean, I have less access to things now, you know, because I'm sure. not part of like a camp or a team. But um, yeah, I mean, the things that are available, like you know, it's more common now and more uh, uh, utilized, like the ice baths and the saunas sure. and, and the sport recovery and you know, massage therapy and all this stuff that's uh, beneficial. You know, it's been around for you know, years, thousands of years. People have been using that, really yeah. making. Uh, isolation tanks and things like that. Sure. So I have I have a lot of friends that actually own those kind of companies and businesses. So 
I definitely utilize that. And more so as you get older, you have to train smarter, right? So right. I'm not yeah. five anymore. I can't just go 100 miles an hour and then be fine. I have to, you know, you gotta actually find a better way of, of working instead of just kind of just staying your head against the wall. Right. Like, when I was in my twenties. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of I kind of noticed uh, a little something. I saw that you had trained for tri with TriStar for a little bit there. Uh, how was your time there when you were you know practicing there? It, it was amazing. I mean, it was probably one of the best decisions that I, I had made. Um, you know, I had a good team down here, but I was at the time I was like the biggest guy in the camp, and I just kind of think I, I outgrew that that camp. So I, um, you know, I had friends that went up to TriStar and mutual connections and stuff. So. And I used to go up to Canada a lot and train for judo. So it was actually where we stayed at the hotel was actually a block away from TriStar Gym. I didn't, I didn't know that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome up there. You know, the, the amount of bodies, high level UFC fighters that came in. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm sure my friends are sick of it because I'm like, you know, I see the fighters all the time. Like, oh, I used to train with them. He used to beat me up. And like, you know, just uh, every day was just like training with superstars. And, yeah, so I definitely. You know, I was a little fish, but you know, to me, that's that's what's needed to develop. Definitely. What uh, you know, what got you into combat sports in general? I know you you did some wrestling, some judo. So what you know, what ultimately gave you that bug? You know, you could have went different paths, going to soccer, or football. So what you know, ultimately, you know, took you to combat sports. Um. Well, I was never good at soccer or football. So, <laughs> uh, that's one thing. Um. But with my judo background, so I um. You know, I, I did judo and I wrestled, and you know, early on, the early UFCs, uh, Carlo Parisian was a uh, was a big name, and he yeah. was a judo. You know, I, we used to compete against each other. We were in the same division, um, so I was like, well, he's doing. He's a judo guy, and you know, like, and, and I'm, I used to I used to beat on him, you know, in, in judo tournaments. So I was like, well, why <laughs> why couldn't I do that as well? You know, not taking anything from him. He was he was an amazing fighter, you know, uh, in his early days. Like, he was a phenomenal. Um, and uh, but I was like, maybe I have a chance. I wouldn't say I would be better than him, but I didn't think that. But I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna give it a try. And you know, during my judo career in the Olympics and all that, uh, that was my focus. And I was like, if I'm still young enough and healthy enough, when I retire from judo, I want to try MMA. Just, mm -hmm. just to kind of see where where it can go. And uh, yeah. you know, I did better than I expected, and I think a lot of people expected as well, starting at 32. Yeah, most definitely. Now I know you opened up your your gym. Um, you know what what ultimately like took you to, towards that decision of opening up your gym and you know teaching the youth. You know of uh, of the of your area of America. You know. Well, um, it's much easier than getting punched in the face for a living. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, that was kind of my that was kind of my plan. I think from the beginning. You know, my uh, early on, my my judo coach Jimmy Pedro was also my manager for fighting when I first started. Um, and he's just like, you know, take advantage of what you can get out of fighting right now. Build a name. Build uh, um, you know, resume. You know, and I was able to do that. I got to train with some of the best fighters. You know. In history, like George St. Pierre and you know, all these amazing guys and, 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 and gals and fighters and stuff like that. So I had, you know, I learned Muay Thai, I learned Jiu Jitsu, I learned Karate, I learned you know, all these things so that when I opened up the school, I had all that that I could offer. You know? yeah. and that was kind of the plan. Like when I'm done fighting, like it just hurts too much and not paying the bills. Um, yeah. So I was going to open a school and thankfully my, my partner, Tim, who's also my coach. Oh, yeah. You got to go. Yeah. So uh, as far as you know, go ahead. You know, oh, it's all good. Uh, as far as like you know, before fights, you still get those like pre-fight jitters. You know, I watch UFC. I watch an MMA fight, Bellator, whatever. I so I get nervous just like the anticipation until like getting into the cage of when I'm watching the fighters. I can't even imagine like what you must feel, or, or maybe you don't feel that way anymore. You know, since you're, you're experienced now and. But uh, yeah, how do you feel about it now? Do you still get nervous or? Yeah, I think that's important. You know, I managed, I learned how to uh, manage that uh, in, in a positive way. I remember earlier on in my judo career, I'd get too amped up like days before a competition. And I was in great shape, but by the time the competition came, I was like, gas, I couldn't, couldn't compete. Uh -huh. That was so, I wasted all that energy um, right. on the build up. Um, so when I got into the fighting, I, um, I was kind of used to the crowd and that didn't really affect me and I learned how to 
you know, I don't really get amped up. I get focused. I get hyper focused, obviously, during camp, and especially that last week. And then, you know, once I go to the arena, once I start wrapping up my hands, that's when I know I got to turn the switch and it becomes, you know, you got to become, you know, everyone's different. But for me, you know, you got to kind of, there's actually a switch where it's just like, all right, it's, it's freaking go time now. So, nice. I'm trying to get keen. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, um, I'm very curious to hear about, you know, like like your early life. I know you mentioned that you got into martial arts at a very young age. Um, you were born in Chicago. You moved to Oregon when you were young with your family, correct? And yeah. you got into judo at 12 years old, I was reading. Yeah. Take us through that. I mean, with I mean, because not everybody just gets into judo. And with what you accomplished and where you went with judo, I mean, not a, not everybody can just say, yep, I, I did judo, but you you made it to the Olympics. That's a phenomenal you know, achievement just to even make it there. Um, walk us through, you know, what it was like growing up, you know, with your family, getting into judo at a young age and, and what you you did with the Olympics. So, yeah, so my dad had did judo before I was born back in Chicago and um, when we are, I was 12, we found a place that he got me, you know, involved in it. And I loved it, you know. I was I was homeschooled at that age, so you know, I had a lot of time. So, you know, that was like my my focus. Like I just I loved that. Every right. day I was trying to do that. And um so and I was the oldest, uh, um, so a lot of time and you know effort was put into me competing and, and traveling and stuff like that. And, it came from a small town. Eugene, Oregon at the time was a very small college town. Um, nothing really going on there. Judo in particular was very, you know, no one, no one knew about it, about it back then, really, right? So, right. Um, and it was just, you know, that was, I think I watched like the 88 Olympics or something like that on TV and for 92, one of those. And, uh, you know, I made it my goal at that young age. I was like, I want to do the Olympics. Once I learned judo, I was in the Olympics. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, I was maybe 14, 15. I was like, you know, I want to, I want to pursue this. I want to, that's, that's where I want to head. So everything up to that point was, you know, building blocks and steps and to get to that uh, uh, avenue where I had the ability to qualify. And eventually, you know, after high school, I moved to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, which is one of the best places at the time to, yeah. to, to train. And it was free. It was like a, uh, a scholarship. So we didn't have a lot of money, so it was perfect. Everything was paid for. You just had to maintain like a, a high standard and the competitor as a competitor. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But that, as a young teenager, that was like, I only did that. That was my, that was my, my only thing I wanted to do. Wow. And I didn't have a lot of people training with. So we left my original school and I used to train with my dad and his buddies at University of Oregon, they're all like early adults, young adult, 20 year olds. It's just me, like 16, just getting beat up by adults. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that, was, that was tough, but uh, you know, I think look back now, obviously, it's probably uh, beneficial in a lot of ways. Eugene, Oregon, isn't that where the uh, the Nike factory or the Nike uh, headquarters is? In, in yeah, so, uh, yeah, Eugene was like the birthplace of Nike and they're actually with headquarters up in like Beaverton, which is like an hour. That's place. where it is, it's Beaverton. You're right. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I had another question here. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you, you've had your experience. Uh, do you like make sure to pa pass all the knowledge that you learned over the years? Do you make sure to pass that on to like other fighters, maybe that you still have a relationship with? Uh, uh, do you think that's pretty important to, for you to do? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, we ha I have guys that I coach that, you know, they're up and coming amateur fighters and stuff like that, some pro fighters. So I definitely, you know, you know, use my experience and help them out. And, and you know, obviously that's their appreciative of that because obviously it's, you know, um, it's important to have that kind of person, someone who's been there in mm -hmm. a lot of ways to, uh, to kind of, you know, help you out. But, you know, I'm, I don't know everything, but, um, I, you know, I do, from what I've learned, I, like I said, I've learned from a lot of different people and, take bits and pieces from, from everyone and, and try to share that mess with them. Yeah. Cool. You know, whenever, whenever, you know, in the past, I'm sure you, you've probably suffered an injury, you know, before, like most fighters have, um, or, you know, if for some reason you lose, you know, whenever that happens, if, if you lose or if you suffer an injury, um, typically who do you turn to for support? 
in terms of like uh, fixing the injury? Well, just, you know, who, who's there for you when, you know, you're down or, you know, when, when you have an injury or dealing with it and you're just trying to overcome it. Um, is there anybody that you turn to for, for support, even moral support? Um, well, at the time when I, especially like when I had like hip replacement years ago, I was married at the time. Obviously, my wife at the time was, you know, my support and would drive me around and things like that. Sure. Uh, ex -wife. But, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I have a lot of good support staff and, and stuff like that and uh, coaches and friends and, you know, so knock on wood, hopefully uh, nothing else like that. No more injuries. <laughs> Yeah, so I was, uh, you know, I noticed that when you when you first retired, you retired as champion. Um, that that's pretty awesome to you know to uh, to retire on top. Um, I know this is kind of a silly question, but you know, when you're fighting with for a promotion and you're their champion, say after you retired, do they make you give the bell back? Like, how does that work? Um, yeah, so I, to me, I was like, this is my first belt I ever won, right? So I was like, you know what? It's a good time. I beat up a really good, well named uh, fighter. At uh, Bam Bam Healy, you know, yeah. it's, it's a tough fight. It's my first ever five round fight, title fight. I won it. I was like, you know, I, was, you know, I think thirty nine at the time. And I was like, you know what? It's, it's a good time to retire. Why not? A lot of people don't retire on top. So I was like, you know, I'll just finish. Right, yeah. I had my career. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, they, uh, I get to keep the belt. That's awesome. Cool. Get your belt. Yeah. Have it in like a play case. I was gonna say play case probably. <laughs> no, it's sitting on top of my fridge, getting dusty. <laughs> hey, whatever you can see it every day at least, so you know. So that's, exactly. that's that matters. But uh, so what? What I want to know also is, you know, you you had all this time off when you, after retirement. What what uh, ultimately brought you back? Um, just I was toying with the idea. Well, I, my hip was hurt for years. Um, you know, kind of, you know, a few years after I retired, just kept getting worse and worse. And I couldn't really train as hard as I wanted to. And I kept wanting to, like, come back and, you know, tease the idea. You know, I was like, all right, you know, I'll start training for this camp. We'll get ready. And I was like, oh, this sucks. It hurts. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm glad I retired. Like, you know, mentally, I was like, I wanted to do it. But physically, I was like, this is, yeah. this is what, um, you know, I retired for a reason. Um, and then my, I got my hip fixed. And I was like, oh, man, I, I feel great. Uh, and I still, even after I kind of toyed with the idea, I was like, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I didn't do it. And then finally, I was like, you know what? I can still do it. Like, you know, I, why not? I, it, gave, it gave me some kind of, throughout my career, my life, I always had something, a goal to shoot for. Yeah. You know, it was either like, all right, I got a tournament in three months. I got a fight in four months, whatever. So it was always something in my entire life that I had to uh, know, get ready for. Right. So that was kind of. When I retired, I didn't really have that anymore. They had my job, obviously, it was very important, but it wasn't the same. So it was kind of strange in that aspect where I just, you know, I, I needed something to kind of shoot for, whether it's a tournament, a jutsu tournament, or uh, a fight, especially a fight, um, because obviously you need to be ready for that, and yeah. you don't want to hurt. So make sure that you're, you know, you're all in. Um, so to me, that was, a, you know, I could still do it, but also it gave me some kind of. Uh, emotional support and moral you know uh, just overall well i felt better yeah the shooting training for something gave me you know something to do have more more of a purpose than just work which is awesome as well my job right. i wanted more i'm still competitive so yeah you always gonna have that fire in you for sure yeah yeah, yeah. especially when i'm training with some young fighters and stuff and i'm like ah oh, I, I still got it <laughs> you know? yeah. um what about when you're not training? What what are like things you do outside of uh, training when you're not thinking of fighting? What are some things that you really do enjoy in your free time? Um, well, I don't have a lot of free time, um, <laughs> but uh, work takes up a lot of it. But you know, if I can, like go up to like the mountains up north, like an hour and a half. And nice. Hampshire and Vermont stuff, so it's really nice and cool and relaxing. Um, obviously, we're close to the the ocean, um, nice. so but. Um, yeah, I mean, like, hang on my dog and, and stuff like that. But, um, and what kind of dog do you got? Uh, I have a hairless uh, Chinese crested Mexican hairless mix. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've ever heard of that dog before. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, he's, he's like 40, 30, 40 pounds. He has no hair except a little bit on his head, like me. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> what's, the, what's the name? Renly. Renly. Right. That's awesome. 
Um, so I was wondering, you know, do you have like a plan at this point? Or are you just kind of going with the flow as, you know, as far as your fighting, you know, career? Are you just kind of taking it one fight at a time or is there, you know, a certain uh, vision that you have or? No, I'm just doing it one fight at a time. I mean, I really took this fight because it's on my birthday. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I fought on the show like, like a few times. My second fight I ever had was on this, on this show and Joe Cab is a great promoter. And it's a great show. Um, and um, so yeah, it's close to home. I have a lot of friends and family and stuff that can show up. And, so, but more more than anything, it was on my birthday. I was like, you know what, that never happened again, and I've never fought my birthday. I was like, that's kind of cool. Why not? So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a, that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. What are the odds that it lands on your birthday? You know, so yeah. that would definitely exactly. be special. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead, bud. I was gonna say, you know, obviously you've been eating clean, training very hard for this camp. What would you say your post fight meal is gonna look like? Anything on the list? Um, well, I don't have to cut the 55 anymore, like I used to sip on 170, so I don't have to eat as good as I used to. <laughs> so, there you go. Hey, uh, hope, hope. but obviously, I'm still obviously, you know, I'm not going crazy, but um, you know, I, I there's nothing really that I want to like eat afterwards that I kind of haven't really been eating a little bit all the time, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> pizza and tacos and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I, you know, I think I had tacos today actually, but uh, there you go. But they're, they're, they're kind of healthy, you know, you know? I don't feel yeah. like deep. Yeah, you got me in there, you know? <laughs> you got yeah. some carbs. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm only 12 pounds over right now, so I'm good. Yeah, that's not bad. You're, you're, you're looking pretty good for being on weight. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, you uh, you uh, watch any uh, any sports other than, uh, you know, MMA or judo? You watch, like, football or anything? No, I used to. Um, mm. I honestly, you know, don't have time as much. Yeah. You know, if I go to, like, a bar or something like that, and if there's a football game, obviously I'll... Right. You know, I, I'll watch it, but um, yeah, I'm not really into the, the sports and even MMA. I don't really like follow it like I used to. I'm kind of just yeah. disconnected from the the scene. And some, you know, I'll go. Friends have like a big fight. Maybe I'll go watch it or something. Like that. Yeah, but, yeah. I'm not not really into it like I used to be. Any like favorite fight movies? And I know you say you don't really have time to watch things, but have you ever seen like a fight movie that you're like, man, that, that's a good movie. I gotta I gotta watch that again. Um, I think one of the all-time classics, I think, which is a lot of fighters, one of the first movies was, uh, was, um, oh, John a blank now, uh, Van Damme. Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme? Yeah, but it was his first movie. Bloodsport. Yeah, Bloodsport. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Cheesy, right? cheesy movie, unrealistic, but <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't blame I, you. I know there's some no new movies that are, you know, uh, more modern and more realistic, um, you know, which is, is kind of cool. Like the John Wick movies and stuff like that. You see, oh like, yeah, yeah. You know, just gets and, and stuff. And actually, uh, Dan Camarillo, who's an awesome Jiu Jitsu guy, you know, I think he was training Keanu for a lot of those uh, scenes oh. and moves. And stuff. Nice, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I heard he did all his own stunts for that. So yeah, yeah, and he's also amazing. I think now, so. Amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, Corey, is there anything else that you that uh, you wanted to cover? Uh, um, just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you go. You. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, uh, you know, after like just you know looking at tendencies of your opponent coming up here, uh, like, could you give me like a quick fight prediction as to like how you think the fight's gonna go? Uh, well, I plan on winning. Um, there we go. But uh, <laughs> obviously, but um, you know, he's he's a tough guy. He's he's you know he's fought some really tough big names. Seasoned, he's, he's a veteran. I think he has like double the fights or more than that than I do. Um, so, and I know he's a very good jujitsu grappler guy. So, I gotta, I gotta, I can't take him lightly. Um, yeah. Obviously, he's gonna be a little bigger than me, and you know, at 170, everyone's a little bigger than me. So, um, you know, I got, I can't take him lightly. Like I said, I gotta go out there and, and I'm preparing for him to be super dangerous and, and threatening, and you know, I'll be ready for him. Yeah. Final thing for me, I just wanna, I just wanna wish you luck on your fight. You know, I really hope you get that dub for on your birthday, especially. I'm um, really uh, inspired by your story. You know, like you're still doing it. You're still going hard. You're still competitive, and I, that's something that I could respect. You know, because I'm the type of person as well to be very competitive and want to want the best for myself. And I see that in you after this, you know, conversation we had. So, 
uh, just want to wish you luck on your future and you know I'll be uh, along for the ride and watching what uh, you accomplish awesome man. I appreciate it thank you yeah absolutely if we could get one more thing from you Rick if you wouldn't mind just saying this is Rick Hahn and you're watching the blown coverage blown coverage the blown yeah. coverage this is Rick Hahn and you're watching the blown coverage Appreciate it, my man. We wish you the best of luck. We're going to do our best to uh, try and head out there. Uh, we were invited. You know, the, the people that got us in touch, they did invite us to the fight. So um, we're going to check with the marketing team and we're going to see if we can make it out there, man. It would be a fun birthday trip for me. But uh, yeah. wishing you luck, man. All the best to you. And uh, we're going to be pulling for you on fight night. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Guys. This is the blown coverage. Again, if you want to get uh, tuned in with Combat FC, it will be available on UFC Fight Pass Friday, September 15th. Rick Hahn is going to be fighting. Be sure to tune in, guys, and we'll be sure to see you next time here on Blown Coverage. One last thing, actually, before we go. I saw the merch you just got, Rick. That, that shirt, that black shirt with the wolf on it. Yeah. yeah gotta go check it out we're gonna put the uh, link to that in the description so you guys can go get some merch and rep some uh rick Hahn merch man it's a badass yeah. shirt so it you is. guys go buy that and support awesome. thank you i appreciate that absolutely rick we'll see you next time all right see you guys right. hopefully uh, next week. absolutely all right, all right. take care thank you hey what's